Do you enjoy the aroma of burning money? Does the thought of eating a meal without meaningless TV in the background send a chill down your spine? Well, congratulations on becoming a loyal Netflix subscriber. Netflix stock is way down. The streaming monopoly they once held is quickly fading away as their catalogue dwindles in comparison to their direct rivals. So, in a world where relinquishing my credit card to Mickey Mouse is a prerequisite for watching My Name is Earl, what does Netflix have left? Today, I'll submit to you my choice for Netflix's best show. For my own sanity, this is based off of the pretty varied catalogue of shows I have actually watched, and genres like sitcoms haven't even been considered. So, if you still enjoy receiving monthly mailed box sets of Frasier to your Neolithic encampment, this is not the video for you. In recent years, the only reason to even bother paying for Netflix is their core group of original series that have established themselves as must-watches. Shows like Sex Education, Black Mirror, Stranger Things, and You are all big IPs that draw massive viewership for the platform. I personally have watched every episode of all of those shows, and needless to say, I see the appeal. However, amidst those juggernauts of streaming, there was a newcomer that really left an impression on me, one which is the subject of this video, and that's Love, Death, and Robots. Conceived by Tim Miller and David Fincher, Love, Death, and Robots is a spiritual successor to 1981's animated anthology, Heavy Metal. The show was born from the two creators' idea for a reboot of the 80s cult classic, which was ultimately condemned to development hell. After years of pitching to studios and nothing materialising, the pair brought their idea for an adult animated anthology to Netflix, who greenlit the project. Now we have a little background, let's channel our beloved president and dive right in. As of this video's release, there are currently three volumes of the series, with the first being the largest, followed by the third, and then the second. Each episode is completely unrelated to the last and often showcases an entirely different style of animation. The art styles used on the show range from photorealistic 3D CGI to conventional 2D animation and beyond. As in many anthologies, each story told varies in length, so some episodes can clock in at an easily digestible 7 minute short, whereas others can reach the 20 minutes plus mark. The only exceptional cases are the episodes entitled three robots. There have been two parts to this sub-series, the original and escape plans, and both follow the same three mechanical companions exploring the Earth after the time of man has passed, and passing comment on what it may have been like. These episodes rank fairly low on my mental tier list for the anthology, but that's more a comment on the quality of other episodes than Three Robots itself. I would love to individually analyse every story across the three volumes, as I think they're all deserving of their own section, but in the interest of time and the crippling fear of seeing audience retention dip in YouTube studio, I'll stick to my top five. Ranking this show was actually really hard, because after looking around the internet a little bit to compare thoughts, I realised that every single ranking was significantly different from the last. It seemed that a lot of people were polarised on certain episodes, which saw the same story ranked at sub-10 in some lists, and top 5 in another. For example, the episode The Drowned Giant featured at second in Space.com's top 10, but is only rated so high as 23rd on IMDb according to audience ratings. Similarly, IndieWire put Michael B. Jordan's contribution to the series Life Hutch at 5th, whereas once again audience members collectively ranked it at 26. Seventh. As for my ranking, I have some obvious personal biases which don't exactly match the opinions of the majority, but each was meticulously decided upon after much deliberation. At first, I placed the Soviet occultist action horror The Secret War. This episode is technically joint fifth on IMDb with the same rating as the two above it, and so I'm not too wide of the public opinion, but as for it being number one, I base this off of the beautiful Siberian scenery displayed throughout, captured by a well-executed art style. The episode has both beautiful moments of tense tranquility and roaring combat action, with a mix of protagonists that are instantly likeable. The episode's climax is especially cool, and seals it as one of the better episodes across the three volumes. In second, I ranked IMDb's favourite episode, Bad Traveller. This nautical horror is the longest of any episode in the series, and deservedly so. The story is compelling start to finish, and worthy of the 22 minute runtime it commands. It follows a ship crew besieged by a deep sea horror which spares the ship of any more violence, so long as it's taken to the well populated Faden Island and well fed on this journey. The dynamic between the crew and their captain, as well as the skipper's cunning dictatorial rule, makes this easily top five for me, and all of this is supplemented by an impressive use of tone within the fitting animation choice, a very, very good episode overall. Third place hosts one of the more light hearted stories, Mason's Rats. How this was ever ranked 12th by audience reviews is beyond me, because it's one of the most endearing and entertaining shorts I have ever seen. Following a farmer and his increasingly technological battle with a highly intelligent race of barn rodents, this episode has an animation style befitting the quirky, comedic nature of the story, and left a lasting impression on me, resulting in it being far and away the most rewatched member of my top 5. Thoroughly recommend this one. Fourth on my list was the first piece that left me unsure of the rankings. I absolutely love Mason's Rats, but towards the bottom of the top five, it becomes increasingly difficult to say which episodes edge out which. With that said, I marked this position for the pseudo-biography of elusive painter Zima. 
Following his journey from frustrated portrait artist to galactically acclaimed muralist through the eyes of an intrigued member of the press, this episode is the first on this ranking without any action scenes or violence. Instead, the episode provides a thoughtful account of a man's interstellar pursuit of meaning and purpose. It's also the only 2D animated feature in my ranking with a similar style to that of another episode, Ice. The story itself is extremely simple as it's told in retrospect by just two characters, and ends resolutely without the need or desire for a cliffhanger whilst remaining impactful. Deservedly top 5, and indeed, top 4. Finally, we have my fifth choice, the cyclical thriller, The Witness. Mysteriously portraying the flight of a hotel resident after witnessing the murder of a woman just across the street, The Witness does a really good job of building the looming, empty metropolis it's set in, which gives the entire place a sense of loneliness and foreboding. Combine that with an attractive art style, and it's almost faux live-action approach to each scene, with single-camera setups and things like the lens being fogged up by the character's breathing, and this leaves you with a unique, captivating short to round off the top five. So, there you have it, my top 5 Love, Death and Robots episodes spanning all three volumes. I've tried to keep my reasoning for their ranking brief and somewhat vague so that you can go and watch those episodes for yourself without them being spoiled beforehand. I would love to break every episode in the series down in detail and talk about my favourite parts, but I do not feel like editing a 10 hour monologue. Before I give you my thoughts on the series as a whole and my hopes for the future, I would like to expand upon my top 5 by presenting some honourable mentions. Just some episodes which I believe are either underrated by audiences and entertainment outlets, or that were quality additions but not top 5 material. The first of which is When the Yogurt Took Over. This episode features one of the series' more fantastical plot lines, but nonetheless it's a very rewatchable episode that is good, simple fun. It's not the most powerful episode and has nothing to say, but I personally just like both the animation choices and its decidedly absurd tale. An episode whose art style I'm a big fan of and believe is hard done by in terms of audience reviews was The Very Pulse of the Machine. Used in a lot of the marketing material for Volume 3, this episode portrays a psychedelic journey across one of Jupiter's moons after a cosmonaut is trapped, the Martian style, on the body's surface. The visuals are striking and although it doesn't seem to resonate with a large portion of the show's view, Viewers, I have always appreciated the episode as an exhibition of its own artistic choices, if nothing else. One thing I will say is that the episode could have been greatly improved by hammering home what was at stake. It was unclear to me on first watch what exactly the point of the main character's journey was. Pressing on, my third and final honourable mention is the ever-contentious Jibaro. This is one of the more polarising episodes from what I can gather, and I can see why, having watched it multiple times. This story follows a deaf knight who becomes involved with a mysterious creature of the forest who would seek to lure our protagonist to his death with her hypnotising voice. I found that I felt obligated to mention it here, as I'm not sure whether to hate the episode or applaud its ability to make me uncomfortable throughout its runtime. The audio design used to contrast the knight's inability to hear and the loud world around him is either a genius decision that intentionally prevents the viewer from being at ease during, or a blunder that results in the episode being borderline unwatchable. The visuals are really cool, and it's certainly the most avant-garde entry in the show's catalogue, but I'm still not convinced that's a good thing. Love, Death and Robots has been one of the highlights of my Netflix subscription since I started watching a few years ago, and despite no recent news, I am very excited to see what they do next. The show was renewed a year ago this month, so we'll have to see whether the current turmoil in Hollywood affects the delivery of the fourth volume, but I'd like to tell you what I hope to see when it does come. In recent years, high production value entries and highly rated episodes have been predominantly 3D animated ones. I would love to see a focus on more traditional animation in the series, with a growing balance of 3D, 2D, and the creators making their first foray into techniques like stop motion. Ocean. For now though, we can only speculate. But one thing is for sure, Love, Death and Robots is indisputably one of Netflix's best titles. And as for me, I hope to see it continue for years to come. I hope you all enjoyed this video and perhaps get a new must-watch to add to your list. I would implore you to go and check out all the episodes mentioned here, as well as any that weren't. And if you disagree with my rankings or have a different view on the series, then feel free to leave a scorching reprimand in the comments below. I read them all. Thank you again for watching, subscribe for more like this, and stay greasy, friends.